Hello and welcome to this overview of the VR4 HD AV mixer. This is a four input HDMI video mixer with a full audio mixer and video and audio processing and effects and multiple outputs, including HDMI and USB, which can be used for recording or streaming. So we'll talk about key features on the VR4 HD before we dive in. We'll talk about Roland's reliable hardware design. So this is enterprise grade hardware reliability with tactical buttons and touchscreen control. This is a hardware switcher and there's optional software control that can synchronize to it. But remember that everything can be done in this box. Also mechanical push buttons for switching between your sources. And you have knobs and faders for most of the audio controls here as well as uh, setup buttons that can bring you into additional channel strip functions. And then this right here is a touchscreen LCD, including the menu. So the menu has a push knob, but you can also use the touchscreen to quickly access settings. So you can kind of use them together in tandem to navigate the menu and quickly adjust your settings. Also, streaming and recording your content. This is a big one. When we think about all the video and audio that goes through the VR4 HD and is processed and mixed together, it's like one big webcam. So you can output that HD video and audio to the platform of your choice, whether it's conferencing software or anything that'll accept a USB video source or webcam. You can also use our free VR capture recording software, which I'll show you a little bit later, if you just wanted to record instead of streaming. And then finally, there are some powerful automation tools there's auto mixing, audio follows video, and video follows audio, which help automate single operator workflows. One operator can manage the video switching and audio mixing, and especially when they're aided by these automation tools that I'll give you an overview on as well. We'll start with the uh, top panel here, and then we'll also kind of go back and forth between the back and side panel as well. So these are the four video input select buttons. And this right here is the HDMI program out. There's also a preview out and I'll uh, mention that in a bit. And to switch between sources, you just choose the transition type. So cut, or you can do dissolve or wipe and you can set the length of the dissolve and wipe with this time knob. You also have, this is for the key effect overlay, which I'll show you in a bit, but we're gonna talk briefly about the inputs. There's three HDMI inputs, one, two, and three. They can take 720p or 1080i and 1080p sources. What does that mean exactly? So we're talking about resolution here. If you look at the system menu, you can see that the system format by default is set to 1080p video. So in that situation, you can take in 1080i and or 1080p sources and it will output them as 1080p. But if you have 720p cameras, then you would need to set the system format to 720p. So everything would need to match for 720. It will not up convert. Now the exception to this is input number four. So I'm gonna go back to this view here. And so HDMI input number four, you can see is kind of has a line in between three and four. That's a multi-format input. So it has a scaler. And what that means is it'll automatically resize the source resolution to match the system format, the output resolution. You can also resize and reposition the image on top of that. And you can also see that there's a flex input, RGB component or analog composite RCA. You have some analog options as well. So it can help with connecting legacy devices, older computer, document camera, things like that. Below that, PVW out. That's the LCD screen, but it's just a direct output of the quad preview if you need to see the sources on a larger display. And then HDMI out, which is the program view that you saw earlier. And next to that is the USB 3.0 video streaming output. So that's a USB 3.0 type B connector. And then you just get a cable that goes from type B to either type A or USB C. In addition to that, you can see there's a nine pin RS-232 port all the way on the left for serial control. And you have additional control options and tally functionality with the tally GPIO port. And it's not the manual that comes in the box, but there's a separate PDF manual on the product page called the reference manual. And that has detailed information about those should you need it. And we're going to come back to this when we start talking about the audio. 
Let's go back here and get out of the menu. When you're setting up the mix, all you do is turn up the main fader to this bold line right here, three quarters of the way up. And then if you're going to stream, you want the audio mix as well. So the main mix will pass through to this USB 2 PC knob. So set that to two o'clock on the dot right there. And whatever your mix ends up being will pass through without being boosted or attenuated. If you need to make adjustments to the overall mix, you can do it here with the main mix, and then you can also do it separately for the USB stream. From PC is if you have any audio coming directly from the computer back in via USB. So it's actually two-way audio with uh, USB 3.0 on the VR4 HD. And also too, when uh, setting up USB for the first time, we have support resources to help you choose the right cable and get the information you need to make that connection. Here we have four XLR TRS combo inputs. And you can see I got two XLR microphones connected already. So you have the fader, gain control, and you have individual setup options here. So you can adjust the pan. You could do input delay for each individual audio source. So you can set delays to get everything to match up with the cameras and the headphone mix. You also have aux sends and they're open by default, but the uh, aux bus is muted. By default, it's assigned to the RCA outputs on the back. And one cool thing you can do with that is that maybe you want like a mic only mix to go from those RCA outs to a separate recorder. That way you can leave music out of the mix if you need to change it later. So if you have, you know, music during the broadcast or stream, you can just have this ISO mix of all the mics mixed together. And these are post fader aux sends. So the fader level will impact the uh, send level for those sources. Up here, also, these are like faders for embedded HDMI audio sources. So each of the HDMI inputs, you can control the volume level there. And then you also have additional for line and embedded sources, you can adjust the EQ. And you also have a compressor in addition to EQ for the uh, XLR TRS combo inputs. They're right on the left side there. And so on that bottom picture, you can see the four combo inputs. And then there's two pairs of phantom power switches as well that you can see to the right of them there. And then on the back, those are those line inputs. So there's a stereo RCA line in and stereo eighth inch line in. So those are five and six and seven and eight. So you saw that those were stereo fader pairs. The stereo channels are linked to that single fader. And then you also have audio outputs that can be assigned to that main or the aux mix that I mentioned. That covers the IO for the VR4 HD and I'm going to start to show you some of the functions and features. So we'll kind of start with graphics using the chroma key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit setup. I'm going to go to the key menu. My target channel is four. I'm going to bring this up so you can see it. Four is this graphic with a bright green background. So I set up the graphic with a background. RGB green is 255 and red and blue are zero. I want to superimpose it on the video using the key effect. I have it as channel four. There's a chroma key. I want to change blue to green. So now when I bring in this key overlay, I have a nice clean lower third. And if I want to change my slide, I can just do that on my uh, slide computer. Then I can bring in that graphic. Using a computer as a source, you can bring in a variety of graphic sources and you can then key them out. And if you need to adjust the key level without going into the key menu, you can press this button right here and you can adjust that level setting right there. That can also be used for a green screen. But with a green screen, you may need to make adjustments to the hue and saturation controls to kind of really dial in that green. You also have picture in picture effect. So when I do this, it'll queue up picture in picture and I choose the window source. From there, you can also do cut switching in between the two, and then you can fade it out by pressing picture in picture again. In the picture in picture menu, you have a variety of options, including the size, border width, and position. 
And a trick here too is if you push and twist instead of just twisting, you can see it moves much faster. So if you're trying to dial something in, and that works with just about any setting that has a wide range of values, you can push and twist to get there quicker. You have all sorts of different shapes you can do. And you can also change the aspect ratio if you want more of a uh, one by one instead of 16 by nine. I'm gonna turn off the uh, picture in picture right there. Those are pretty much the video effects that you can combine picture in picture and the key, create more dynamic content. Also too with video sources, if you ever need to do any troubleshooting, if you press this in out setup button, it'll show you the resolution and frame rate and scan type of all incoming sources. So like my three media players that are my imaginary cameras, those are 1080i, 5994, but my uh, computer source for graphics is 1080p, 5994. So that was like what I was talking about earlier is I'm outputting 1080p, so it's actually taking those 1080i and 1080p sources and converting everything over to 1080p. I is for interlaced and P is for progressive. I'm gonna get out of there and next I'm gonna go over some audio settings. If you're ever setting up an audio mixer or an audio interface and then you're running all your audio through there, what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna plug them into say, if you're running balanced audio, you'd run them into one and two and then you'd hard pan one all the way to the left and two all the way to the right. You just go like that. And then make sure the gain is all the way down. And then just run a balanced test tone through there and just match the level. You may need to boost the gain just like one or two dB just to get it to match that. Or you can use the unbalanced RCA line inputs as well with the unbalanced reference level. Next, I'm going to talk about some of those audio automation features that we mentioned at the beginning. There's auto mixing, which you can turn on and off up here. Let me just turn off my PIP window so you can see it. So using these user buttons here, I have auto mixing and I can turn that on and off there. You can also customize these to different functions as well. So auto mixing is pretty straightforward. You can turn on and off the individual mics and I'll show that to you through the RCS software. And then third, I'm gonna show you video follows audio. Auto mixing, it just automates the mix levels. You can turn individual sources on and off for that and assign uh, weight values depending on, you know, which sources you want to have priority over one another. There's also then audio follows, which is in this main setup button. So if I go to audio follow, I have this matrix, right? And the effects off right now is you just tap it in the corner to turn it on. There are four columns that correspond to the four video input selects. And so whichever input is selected, it'll follow the rules in that column. So each audio source, anything that's on is accessible in the mix. If it's off, it's completely muted out. So it's a way to automate your mutes, right? That can be helpful part of simplifying the audio mixing production. If I'm playing media on four, I don't want the mics to be open so I can turn them off with audio follows, for example. Still though, if you have the fader all the way down and it says on, it will be muted because there's no, the mix levels all the way down. It just enables the channel to be part of the mix if you bring the fader up. And then the third bit of automation that I wanna show you is video follows audio, which is part of uh, auto switching. Let me just set the transition time here. It has a separate transition time setting. I'm gonna change the type over to video follows audio. I'm gonna go with the default two second release. And so this lets the microphones do the switching for me. And so in this setup, you know, what I'm doing is I have camera one is wide, camera two is a close up, and of course three is a close up as well. I'm gonna have mic one control camera two, mic two control camera three. I don't have a third or fourth mic, so I can leave those alone. I can set both mics or neither mic over that audio threshold to go back to the wide. From there, I would just turn the effect on 
it's now configured. But I want to map it to this echo cancel button. So I can do this assign function up here. And I'm going to change echo cancel to auto switching. So now when I press this echo cancel button, that'll enable auto switching. And I'm just going to set up my mics. I'm going to add some gain to these two handheld dynamics that I have. Here are my mics. And I just need to turn on video follows audio and bring them into my mix. And also so you can see the video overlay. So you can see with that, that I used a combination of the two microphones to control the switching. So when I tapped on one, it went to the close up for that microphone. And when I tapped both, it went back to the wide. And when I let go and no one was speaking, it, it either went back or stayed on the wide. As you saw in that menu, you can customize that feature to how you need it to. And then if you have it mapped to a user button, you can turn it on when you need it. And you can turn it off when you want more manual control of the switching. But again, we're talking about single operator workflows. It's helpful to have these tools to automate your production and your video switching as well as audio mixing. Also worth mentioning about these user buttons is solos and mutes are put up here. So solo will go straight to the headphone mix and then mute, you can mute individual audio channels as well. And here you can recall memory presets. And so next I wanna show you the RCS software, the uh, free software for Windows and Mac. You can see you have the audio mixer controls and it is connected and you can see that the faders and everything are synchronized to it, including the switching. So with this, I could also control the switcher and it would change the hardware buttons as well. And then also nice, uh, auto mixing right here you can see that this is the uh, auto mixer function that i mentioned you can set up the weight values for each input and individually turn them on and off and then if you if you're working with audio channels here uh, rcs software can be pretty convenient because you have eq and compression you can kind of click and drag and visually set up the eq and compressor for the xlr trs inputs and the eq of course for the line and hdmi inputs as well this is a good companion to the hardware, kind of gives you access to a lot of features at your fingertips. And this right here is the free VR capture software. This is the obviously a program out. So that's that USB output and it would be both the audio and the video. So you would just select them both from these drop down menus and you would be able to record this to your hard drive. That covers the VR4 HD talking about the reliable hardware design. You know, you saw the buttons and knobs and faders and controls all in a single chassis and touchscreen control with the LCD. And of course, a big one is streaming and recording your content using that USB output. You saw the feed on the computer there. So this is like one big webcam outputting HD video and audio to the platform of your choice. And as you saw demonstrated, the powerful automation tools, there's auto mixing, audio follows video, and video follows audio to help automate that single operator workflow. And for additional support, visit roland.com backstage. Thanks for watching.